going round Donington in this super little car. This was the first racing car to win a world championship that had the engine in the back, other than the Auto Union before the war. This car is a Cooper Formula One car. This happens to be a, a, a 59 model. Uh, this is exactly the same, or nearly exactly the same, as the one that I managed to win the Argentine Grand Prix in 1958 with. It really is a very, very pleasurable car to drive. I mean, it's very responsive to the steering, you know, I mean, the brakes are good, the, the performance is remarkable, really. Well, now, I'm going slowly at the moment, I'm trying to get the water temperature up here so that the oil pressure will drop, but that's coming down quite nicely and then I'll use a bit more res. Before I do, I want to show you, let's just go around this corner on the racing line, but not at racing speed. I come in, change down, start on the outside, right on the other, and then cut right into the apex right there, like that. And then go out there wide, then into the next apex, and then wide out here, and that's the sort of racing line. Now, that's very easy to do when one's just cruising along. I mean, you just go left to right, Make the biggest radius you can. And obviously that is the quickest way at the speed that you're going. Now when you're racing, you do the same thing. You start out here, you cut in, you push the radius with you, the, the uh, apex with you, and then you bring the power in as early as you can. Now, the earlier you can get the power on, the better it is. I'll show you again, you start here, Close in there, and then you go to the outside. Well, here we're coming into double corner, so I'm going to the right, and now I'll go out to the left again, right there. Now I come to the outside here. Now, that's just going round on the, on the, on the sort of racing line, but when you're actually racing, you can't necessarily do it like that. And one has to develop one's own technique. Now, in my career, I reckon it took me at least five years to learn how to brake really hard. Because braking isn't just putting your foot on the brakes and slowing the car. Braking is, when you brake hard, the car becomes unstable, basically unstable. Therefore, you've got to learn how to control this and hopefully benefit from doing it. When I go around the corner like this, quite often I don't want to just go in and out. I want to be able to get the car in late like that and then bring them back out. Now I'm oversteering and that helps me. It helps me get my foot down earlier what racing's all about, getting the power on the ground as early as you can. turn in. It's giving me a message through the steering wheel and through the, through the seat of my pads. And by the message I get I, is my interpretation that makes me a better or worse driver than another guy. All the time, it's, like, it's just like when you learn a language. The more you know, the more fluent you are. Well, it's the same with driving. You are more fluent when you can understand the message the car's telling you. Because the car's the thing you're trying to, to, you're trying to control. probably kept it flat there. I was nearly flat, but not completely. Cooper really going quickly and you're really on the limit 
you then lift the inside wheel a bit. It gets very light, the inside wheel. And in circuits like Monaco in the 60s and so on, uh, one could go into a corner and could actually lift the, lift the thing so it would go over the edge of the pavement, if you like. Then the car is, is sort of fluid. It moves around. I mean, when I come into a corner like this one, yeah, you get in, you're on the left, and you come in, and you feel the back end sliding out. You feel the power coming in. I mean, it's enormously satisfying from a driver's point of view. Now, I've no doubt the modern one is if you're good enough to drive it near the limit. But they are very, very different. Of course, the deceleration on these cars, I mean, I did 160, 150 of this, I have to slow up. Uh, I'm going to have to put the brakes on at 300 yards. On the modern car, 70 or 80 yards. I mean, uh, that's going much faster. This sort of car will do probably uh, 155, 160. Um, Slipstream, another guy, you might get a bit more. But today, of course, they're going to go over 200. So there is a big difference. These are a lot more, uh, a lot less safe, of course, because, uh, you, you know, you've got very little around you. And the, the rigidity of this car was, was minimal compared. The torsional rigidity, in my day, the car would twist and they'd say, well, it's following the road. Now, my goodness, the things are 40 times more stiff than this is. Can you imagine? I mean, it's fantastic, really. Down two gears, into the right there. to drive these Coopers. It's because of they because of their they're so user friendly. Keeping out here. Out, out, out. It's quite difficult to force yourself to do that. And there you go. Got quite a lot of power left on this car, I'll tell you that. Come around here, power down, not too far, another one down. Stop in. If you're going to win with it, you've got to drive it right on the limit all the time. And the concentration it requires to do that for three hours or so is enormous. As I go around here, I get enormous pleasure out of this, but I can, uh, I can see I'm not as young as I was. something that, uh, if you're as good as fans you, you give up when you're 46. And I would have settled for less than him, and I probably would have liked to have gone on till I was 50, but now it's my last lap that I've got to go in. So I don't want to do any heroics. So I'm going to try and enjoy it to the end. Huh?